Well, um, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to come and talk to you about two or three different things, and then we'll do some questions and answers uh, at the end. So firstly, I just wanted to move to the uh, agenda. No? Thank you. So I'm going to talk to you about really about three things. I'm going to talk to you about customers and how customer behavior is changing our world, changing our world in transport, changing what we need to do. I'm going to launch some new products today. So we're going to launch um, a couple of new products and we've got some videos and stuff to, to show you around that. I'm going to talk a little bit about our, envir our environmental performance as well. So just a little bit sort of background about us. Obviously, we're a big uh, transportation organization, big not just in the road, but also big in terms of air and sea um, and rail as well, actually, uh, in the UK and uh, throughout the world. I guess most relevantly to us in, uh, in the UK, we're operating around 15,000 vehicles, tends to be polarized at either end, either, either small or, or pretty large. Um, operating from about 500 locations. So we do a lot of transport. We have a lot of different services. Uh, you may have seen about uh, 18 months or so ago, we bought UK Mail, which is a Coventry-based um, parcels business, really focusing on e-commerce. And that was because of the changes that we're seeing in what customers want from their logistics and what they expect from their, um, from their suppliers. So what I'd like to do now is just focus a little bit on where we think that customer challenge is coming from. Okay, so I think there's a lot of things that we see every day in the media. It also reflects, I guess, the way that we have, we have changed our behavior as consumers. But I think if I try and take that big message and direct it explicitly to what this means for transport, we really think there's four big challenges. I think the first is the expectation of service, and, and, and we heard a little bit about that earlier on from Richard, the I know what I want and I know where and when I want it kind of culture. The fact that a lot more consumers are, are in cities and that's forecast to grow as we go forward, and that then creates different challenges again. That customers are also citizens, um, and citizens actually are interested in environmental performance. And so they are increasingly wanting to know what are the environmental credentials of how they're serviced. But perhaps the final one that doesn't get spoken about quite so much 
is actually this creates efficiency utilization and cost pressures for us as uh, transport professionals. We're seeing the reduction in lead times. We're seeing the reduction in the size of a delivery and the increase in the frequency of delivery. And classically, those are things that increase your costs rather than decrease them. So the first area that I'd like to launch today, the first uh, video I'm going to show you is our response in this area, or one of our responses in this area, which is to create new IT capability to be able to deal with those cost challenges. With the customer at the heart of everything we do, and four key essentials identified in support of the ever-changing transport market, great service, competitive cost, seamless visibility and flexibility to respond, DHL recognised the need to create a 21st century transport solution. Introducing Connected TMS. Our Connected TMS connects our customers to all our transport capability and that of our partner organisation across their entire supply chain. It also connects multiple customer transport requirements to create regional and national collaboration. And it connects all of DHL transport operations to each other. Subcontract partners are also connected to the DHL networks in an identical manner to our own fleet, providing a seamless service, access to all available work across DHL UK and simplified administration. So Connected TMS empowers its stakeholders, making their jobs easier while ensuring customer needs are exceeded. DHL extensively reviewed the technology market. However, no single off-the-shelf system met DHL's needs. So by combining these best-of-breed technologies, DHL supply chain created our own bespoke solution. Now customer orders are integrated into Connect TMS, allowing planners to use the latest technology to create the most efficient plans possible from all the available options, while optimizing cost and ensuring certainty of services and compliance with all regulation. Drivers are given practical optimised routes, combining local knowledge and sophisticated planning. And smart POD capability connects the driver and vehicle to the planning centre, relaying feedback and milestone updates, allowing simplified administration. The data results in the planning and customer services teams having real-time visibility and delivery point proof of delivery allowing forecasts of daily performance and being able to quickly provide dynamic on-day exception management when challenges occur. Through holding all of the transport operations in a single solution, DHL are able to harvest its data and create operations and commercial insight for our customers and our operational performance. Connected TMS brings multiple benefits to our customers and provides a unique, scalable and flexible solution which allows access to a world-leading TMS on a transactional and wholly scalable basis. And it's really great to be able to launch this today because you know, we've got a, a very deep relationship with Microlize, goes back over a decade. Our relationship with Quintex, similarly, also we've developed over the course of the last five years. And this is a real story of partnership. We could not have developed what we're now bringing into the marketplace on our own. We'd have been foolish to do so. And by working so closely, and we're going to continue that through the design and application of the product, we believe that we're going to deliver a whole load of benefits um, to our customers by enabling them to get access to really fantastic technology at a purely transactional rate, and that can underpin their service and cost performance um, as they go forward. So uh, yeah, that's the connected TMS. I'm gonna talk a little bit about one of those other challenges that was on the uh, customer slide earlier on, which is about environment, and we've seen a lot on um, alternative fueled uh, vehicles so far today. Um, the big decision that we find is there's so many different things coming at you. What do you choose? How do you choose what you should use? And so we kind of did a little sort of view of this that says, well, where do we think we are at the moment? Well, we know what we want. We want safe, we want clean, and we want quiet. They're really critical to us. And we see that technology has got different strengths. Um, at the moment. But perhaps more interestingly, when we look forward, 
then we see all of those technologies starting to overlap, particularly as they're able to do a greater range or different kind of work or, or greater weight. But we don't see any real, any real magic bullets here. Um, and so really our focus is more than anything on three individual areas. Um, the first at the small end of the market, I, I don't know if you know this, but DHL actually makes electric vehicles. We make about 20,000 uh, street scooters a year, and we've recently uh, announced a, an, a, a partnership approach with Ford to take that into the transit marketplace. We already operate about seven or 8,000 of these across Europe, and they're coming to the UK now. So they're, they're very much going to be very, very important uh, to us as we go forward. I think in the middle area, it's all to play for, really. Um, we're not sure which of those technologies is going to really pull out in the end. There isn't any particularly compelling offer from any of the OEMs at the moment. So we see that as a, a bit of a question mark, really. And notwithstanding the fact that we decided to buy 10 Teslas, which you will get whenever they turn up, um, we do believe that the very heavy end, so you know, 30 odd tons plus, is going to be an issue for these technologies going forward. Anybody, I mean, it's, we don't know how quickly this battery technology is going to come. But what we do know is that we think that gas is going to have a part to pay. And we're working with Cadence, who's one of our customers, to look at um, open access uh, in the Birmingham area. So we are going to be doing more. Watch this space. Now, if you're really eagle-eyed, and if you look on that slide, you might see on top of those vehicles a very thin black line. And that very thin black line is my final video and the final thing that I'm going to launch today. DHL is committed to our target of zero emissions by 2050. So we're focused on developing innovative solutions that will help us reach our target. And now a team in the UK can provide a greener, more cost-efficient, urban-friendly delivery solution that can revolutionise the transport sector. An industry first, we've taken everyday vehicles and added cutting-edge solar technology to harness the sun's energy and reduce the impact of each vehicle journey. So how does it work? Working with our partner Domber and using lightweight solar cells in an ultra-thin flexible film matting to prevent impact on aerodynamic performance. The solar mats are applied to the vehicle's roof space and connected to the vehicle battery or additional onboard batteries. Solar energy is used to power different onboard activities, reducing normal fuel consumption. This means that a trailer becomes completely self-sufficient, reducing the electrical load requirements of the truck. It will contribute to the running of a fridge unit, power all ancillary equipment, making a cubicycle container self-sufficient, and even extend the range of our electric vehicles. Overall, it will allow us to better meet customer needs by enabling quiet urban logistics in city centre low emission zones. Whatever the vehicle type, the benefits include less CO2 emissions and reduced fuel use and maintenance spend by reducing the electrical load. The technology has been independently tested across a range of vehicles, delivering impressive results. So what's next? To ensure the optimum solution that could be rolled out across entire transport supply chains. We're working with our customers to introduce further innovation into logistics, to drive change across multiple sectors, delivering sustainable transport and supply chains for all. Solar power in Britain? I hear you ask, after we've probably had the longest winter that anybody can remember. Well, actually, we've been running those vehicles for six months because we wanted to be absolutely sure that we can look at these results and know that they're going to work. And actually, the results are really exciting. They're not just exciting 
I think for us as a sector, but they're really exciting for uh, buses and for all forms of, uh, of transport as we go forward. So for the next six months, we are taking this to our customers, uh, customers already with DHL, and we're also preparing to launch into the open market. This is really easy to do. We can make it really easy for you to adopt. We can fit this in a normal service and the payback on, on this is absolutely excellent. So we're really excited about this. It doesn't matter whether it's a gas truck, whether it's an electric truck, or whether it's a diesel truck, we know that this will work. So thank you for your time today. Thank you very much indeed. So give us an idea of cost on this. Well, the, the uh, cost is different for the different implementations, but perhaps the better way of expressing it is the payback. So the payback is less than one year. Okay. So if you had, say, um, an HTV like that, what would you be talking? Well, the, the, it depends how many panels you fit. So rather than going to the individu individual details of the panels, it's all about the fuel economy that's created. <coughs> and, and it's the fuel economy that's the real argument for this and why it's complementary to so many of the other technologies that we've seen today. And how soon could we see that operating on mainstream use? Uh, well, I've got, bought a couple for you, Quincy, because I, I thought you might ask a little question. So Here's what, one we prepared Are earlier. these scotch mist, or what do they, they actually look like, if you want to have a look? Um, and you can come any time you like, and you see these vehicles operating now. So this is 20 mil? Uh, 2 mil. 2 mil. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, that's not going to make any difference to your aerodynamic efficiency. No. And it, and it or your weight. And it absolutely, um, you can see them on the picture, actually. They absolutely stick solid to the top of the vehicle. So it doesn't have any issue when you want to clean the vehicle or any of those practical sort of things. And the test that we've done, we've done in English con in con uh, conditions. So my, my colleagues in Australia and South America, um, they're, they're pretty excited about this, as you might imagine. Great. Lovely. Okay. Thank you very much indeed.